shocked. No, no, no. <laughs> it was gripping, gripping. <laughs> and so we're going to continue our efforts with Israel, with Qatar, um, obviously with Egypt, to support and extend this pause as, as much as we can and to help secure the release of all the hostages held by Hamas terrorists. And I know one of the first questions I'm going to get is, what are the chances of an extension? And I just can't tell you that right now, except to tell you that we're working at it literally by the hour to see if we can get this seventh day turned into an eighth and ninth and tenth and, and beyond. But, but all, all I can do is tell you where we are right now, and we're glad that we got a seventh day out of this. Uh, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, have noted that at, at least at the time that I came out here, two hostages had uh, made their way back. Um, I don't know if there'll be more. We certainly hope there'll be more. But again, we're working on this by, by the hour. And we all recognize more needs to be done, more needs to get in. But uh, we shouldn't discount um, the incredible work. That and then I think we've all seen the terrible news coming out of Jerusalem, uh, a, a deadly shooting attack there where uh, at least three people were killed. Hamas has claimed credit. We obviously condemn this terrorist attack, this heinous violence. Just another example. Uh, of the kind of threat that the Israeli people and the Israeli nation are under by, by Hamas. So we certainly extend our condolences and thoughts and prayers to uh, all those affected and the family members that are now grieving, additional family members that are now grieving. Uh, what impact has the shooting uh, of the Hamas taking credit for in Jerusalem had on efforts to extend the humanitarian policy? I don't think there's been any uh, effect, that, not, that I, not that I've heard or seen effect on the on the deal, extending the deal by the violence in Jerusalem. I've seen nothing that indicates an effect on that. And again, we do not support a permanent ceasefire at this time. We do support the idea of humanitarian pauses, and we would love to see, as I said at the outset, uh, we want to see this seven-day pause turn into eight, nine, ten, and beyond. Uh, but ultimately, that's going to take uh, Israel and, and Hamas to agree to the parameters of extending that deal. But in the United States, they'll continue to find an advocate for extension. And how would that attack in any way to be a violation of the ongoing truce between Israel uh, and Hamas? This attack happened in Jerusalem. Right. The pauses and the fighting uh, were specific to Gaza. Right. Okay, so that's as simple as that. I mean, it wasn't, therefore it didn't violate. It didn't the, technically violate the, the deal that was in place, but obviously it's a stark reminder of, of, of who they're facing and what, what, kind of, what kind of enemy that they're opposing. How would any of the proposed conditions slow down or prevent the progress that has been made? And as a result of, and this is what the president was talking about, as a result of our engagement with our Israeli counterparts, we have seen results. I mean, now a, a week-long pause. At the beginning of this, the idea of a pause was unthinkable uh, to our Israeli counterparts. But now a week-long pause. A hundred hostages out, hundreds of trucks of aid getting in. At, at, the, at the outset, the idea of humanitarian assistance getting in was not something that uh, was, uh, was warmly received as an idea. So the president believes that the approach that we've been taking has had results. Now, again, nobody's discounting or dismissing the loss of innocent life, and we continue to work with and share perspectives about urban warfare with our Israeli counterparts so that they can continue to hone their operations in such a way uh, that there's a, re a reduction and a minim uh, minimizing uh, of uh, civilian death. But we're going to continue that approach. Hey, John, you have believe that Hamas does not know where all the hostages are, or is that just something they're propagating the U.S. believes in order to deliver? I can't say with certainty what Hamas knows or doesn't know. Uh, they launched these attacks on the 7th of October with two purposes, one to kill, the other to take hostage. And they did that to a fairly well. Um, we do think that there are some other groups other than Hamas that might be holding hostages. But that's not to say that Hamas doesn't have visibility on that or doesn't have a way to find out about it. So uh, the onus is really on Hamas as, as, as this deal progresses today to identify, locate, and secure these hostages and, and get them to the Red Cross so that they can get to safety. Uh, but I, I couldn't speak with great certainty about uh, exactly what Hamas knows and doesn't know. If we can end this briefing if it's not going to be respectful here. Chris. That's what I'm saying. You're okay. receiving uh, an African okay. leader and you don't take questions. Thanks, everybody. Uh, a question about gas prices. Uh, thanks, everybody. Can we do one about right. the poly gas prices?